Welcome to the second round edition of our prep football video preview. I'm Gabe Wiss, the sports editor of the Gaston Gazette, joined as always by Richard Walker, Philip Gardner. Uh, we're going to break down a little bit of uh, what's going on in the second round. Uh, first question, uh, home field advantage, South Point, Kings Mountain, both at home this round. Um, how much does that help uh, both of those programs? Facing two pretty good opponents here in the second round. I'll let you uh, take one of them, Richard, and Phil, you take the other. Well, they've both benefited in the recent past when they've gone to the state finals. Kings Mountain went 98 in the playoffs, went through Kings Mountain to get there. And with the exception of 79, South Point has almost always been at home. In the way the playoffs are set up now, the better teams do get home field advantage, and that gives you something to play for in the regular season. Um, I definitely think it favors both teams. Um, there's familiarity about being at home. Both programs get good fan support, and, you know, there's a, a sense. I certainly feel from being at South Point last week, and I imagine I'll feel that this week when I go to Kings Mountain, that we can do it here and we can do it through being at home the whole playoffs. I'm one of those that feels like home field is overrated during the regular season, but playoff time, I think that's when it really comes into play yeah. uh, because a lot of times you're you're facing a team that has to travel. You know, in South Point's case, they've got a team coming all the way from High Point. And so I think with South Point being at home, not having to travel so far, uh, the familiarity of their own facilities, their own stadium, their own field, I think that can, that can be a big factor for them. Plus, the fans over there, are, they really get into it more than anybody else around here probably. And they're going to generate a nice atmosphere, and I think South Point will play up to that. And, and same thing for Kings Mountain. Those matchups again, uh, High Point Andrews at South Point, Mooresville at Kings Mountain. Uh, second question, uh, Lincolnton playing another county rival in uh, East Lincoln this week after beating North Lincoln last week. Uh, first time around, game kind of got out of hand. East Lincoln won 49-14. What's Lincolnton got to do excuse me, this week to make it a little closer or to win it? Well, you know, certainly they got to kind of resolve, rely on the, the, the resolve that they have as a state championship team. Um, East Lincoln has long felt kind of like the the underdog in that game. It's it's kind of curious that they go into this game as such an overwhelming favorite. I think that plays to Lincoln's advantage because they have been there, done that. Now I know that East Lincoln feels like this is a special year for them. You know, I would suspect that Scott Cloninger and his staff will come up with some kind of way to try to take Keith Rendleman out of the game and hope that they can finesse doing whatever they can with the East Lincoln running game because Rindelman is such a special talent because of his size and abilities that you almost have to cover to him individually right. throughout the plays. And I just don't know what Lincoln will be able to do to deal with that, but maybe they make some kind of defensive adjustments, but maybe a taller player over there to give him a chance to, to go get the jump ball with Rindelman because you know, the East Lincoln quarterbacks have the great benefit of just being able to throw a jump ball, and he's such a good athlete and such a tall player that even well defended, he can still make the play. I don't think there's any way it's going to be 49 to 14 again. I just don't see that happening. Not in the playoff game, uh, big rivalry. Uh, I think the key for Lincoln, well, I'd say two keys. Number one, defense. They, they let Preston Perry pass for five touchdowns last time and rush for another. Uh, they've got to figure out a way to stop him. And number two, they got to score early. They were down 21 nothing in this game last time. I think if they get some momentum offensively, then it can carry over. But the biggest key, I think, is stopping Preston Perry. Last time against Lincoln, that was his first varsity start, and he just torched Lincoln. I think the second time, Lincoln will be a little bit better prepared now that they sort of got a scouting report on him because the first time they, they didn't really know what all he was about, and this time they'll have a better taste for what he can do. Uh, and finally, uh, two teams from this area going on the road, uh, Bessemer City going to Newton Conover, uh, Clover going to Burns, South Carolina. Um, who's got a tougher task? I know both tasks are pretty tough, but I'll let one take one, one take the other, and talk about uh, those two road games. Like you said, they're both really tough. You know, I think Bessemer City's got a tougher task for the simple fact that Newton Conover really feels like this is their year. Um, you know, at Bessemer City, a lot of these guys, this is, the program's been slowly building. This would be a monumental upset if they could pull it. I think they've got a hard time up at Newton Conover. Um, they're old rivals, but, you know, most of these kids may not even been born back in those old SD7 rivalry days. I know the coaches feel some kinship with one another, but it's a huge challenge for Bessemer City going to Newton Conover, and I would be very surprised if they could pull that one off. I think Clover's got a more difficult matchup. Burns was ranked number one in the nation by USA Today earlier this year. The only reason they're not in that poll anymore is because they lost one game to 
Norman, who's undefeated. Uh, so, I mean, this team's incredible. I've been down there a couple of years ago to see the atmosphere at Burns, and you know, it's like a small college down there. Uh, but Clover's a really good team. They've been playing very well. Um, they got an old Gastonia boy uh, calling plays quarterback Aaron Miller. Uh, you got you know the wing backs and the running backs. You got a lot of speed. Uh, they run that that wing offense really well. Uh, but they've got to slow down. Uh, they got Burns got a really strong running back that they've got to worry about. Uh, I think his name is Marcus Ladmore. He's getting looks from all across the nation, including LSU. And so the big key for Clover's defense. But really tough challenge for them this week. Challenges get tougher uh, every round from here on out, and that'll wrap it up for this week. And uh, we'll see you in the third round roll around.